Well, this is Dr. Stan, and we finally got our guest, uh, Gonzo Shimera. And uh, did I pronounce your name correctly, Gonzo? That's the correct, yeah. Okay, fine. Well, basically, of course, you've done a tremendous amount of work going into the background of this massive occult movement that permeates every aspect of our society, and most people have no idea how it suddenly dominates our religion. It's even in our churches, it's in our entertainment, and it's all intent upon changing our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So you pick up the story, give the background. How did you get involved? How did you find out what this was about, and you've done a magnificent job in your DVDs of bringing this out, so go right ahead. Oh, well, thank you so much for uh, having me on, Stan, uh, and, uh, you know, just wanted to say up front, uh, thank you for all the work you've done over the years, and, um, you know, basically, my story uh, is pretty uh, simple, really. I mean, I uh, was saved back in 2007, and... Uh, for a couple of years, uh, I sort of backslid. At first, it was great, but then, you know, I, I had a lot of questions. And uh, having lived through 9-11, uh, I was uh, 18 years old when the two towers went down, and I was going into college, so I didn't think too much of it at the time. Uh, but as I was saved and I, and I started asking questions, I wasn't really receiving answers from my church. Uh, and they alluded to all kinds of things, political situations, uh, supernatural topics like UFOs, uh, aliens. How does that fit into the Bible? How does it fit into that perspective? And uh, so what I did was, you know, I did what any millennial, a young millennial would do. I went online and I hopped on YouTube and I started digging around trying to look for videos and, you know, different lectures on these sorts of topics. And, you know, I really didn't get a whole lot of answers. What I discovered was a lot of New Age teachers talking about UFOs, conspiracy theories, uh, you know, even 9-11 movies like Zeitgeist uh, were very popular. And it was interesting because uh, they were kind of teaching a different Jesus than the one I was hearing about on Sunday. So it was quite confusing for me for a while. Uh, and then one night I was listening to Coast to Coast AM, uh, just trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. And I heard a, a gentleman named L.A. Marzulli on the radio, and he was talking about the guidebook to the supernatural, and he's talking about the Nephilim and all this stuff. And uh, that opened up a door that uh, I was looking for. Uh, someone that was actually grounded in the scriptures and addressing these topics. And uh, that led me to discover a small community of people online, um, and your work as well, uh, and, and, you know, start to uncover some of these things. And it was, it made a lot more sense to me, uh, the way the world works. And um, so for the next two or three years, I just researched, I read uh, tons of books, articles, I watched a lot of movies and, and different media uh, associated to it, and my perspective of the world began to change radically. But it was grounded, that was the great thing, in the in the scriptures. And I started learning about Bible prophecy, and uh, it got to a point where I felt like my head was going to explode if I didn't put it down in some sort of medium. So uh, I was a sound engineer by trade, uh, so I thought, okay, I can probably pick up video editing. So I decided to create a video, and uh, that video is Age of Deceit, Fallen Angels, and the New World Order, and I posted it on YouTube on September uh, of 2011, and uh, it's got almost 3 million views right now on YouTube, and uh, it's been a huge blessing, and I just actually released uh, recently Age of Deceit 2, Alchemy, and the Rise of the Beast Image, looking at the technological movement and the scientific movement and see where that fits into Bible prophecy. And, of course, uh, we, we, Barbara and I have watched the first one. We're almost through the second one. They're very well done. It's a very, very important contribution. And people have to understand that nothing as it appears to be if you don't understand what is going on behind the scenes. So little of what's going, taking place today really makes sense. Go right ahead. Sure, yeah. And, that's the, and I think... 
with with the first film, you know, it's really interesting because I actually left out tons of information that I had gathered, and a lot of what I left out happened to be on the central mm-hmm. banks and the economy. Uh, and I went sort of more the route of looking at the supernatural elements uh, and the spiritual components, uh, simply because I felt that there were a lot of people exposing, uh, you know, the banks and the uh, the cartel, basically, that's been going on. There's several authors that have done tremendous work in that area. And uh, for me to hash that out again would, you know, would I don't think would necessarily... Uh, be beneficial in a two and a half hour movie. I was trying to fit all kinds of information, so uh, what got left out was that element. But um, you know, to tie in how it relates to this supernatural or spiritual aspect, um, it's it's pretty interesting because when you look at the 1770s, uh, right before the nation was founded officially, uh, Adam Weishaupt uh, started the Illuminati, and uh, he was actually uh, told by, uh, Mayor Amsel, or Amsel Rothschild to create this Illuminati. And the Illuminati basically was, uh, it was basically the Luciferian lore. And to them, you know, Lucifer is the keeper's, uh, keeper of the light, you know, the light bearer. And so this whole ideology, uh, that stems back from thousands and thousands of years uh, was made mainstream, so to speak, underground, uh, within the, right about the time the nation was founded. And it's, you know, it's interesting because it was secret all along. You know, the secret societies have been the ones who have nurtured this information. Uh, but now it's really coming out, and a lot of people are learning about it. But it doesn't change the fact that it's there. Uh, and so, you know, when you start talking about the central banks and all the evil things that they're doing, it makes sense because the spiritual foundation is rooted in the mystery religions that have been around for thousands of years, uh, which is effectively, uh, in essence, a flip, uh, a backwards understanding of who God is and who Lucifer or Satan is. Uh, to the mystery religions, the mystery schools, what they basically teach is that uh, Lucifer is God and that he actually freed Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden uh, from the tyrannical God who was Yahweh and uh, with the gift of knowledge. And so their idea is that knowledge is going to set us free and make ourselves into gods. And uh, this is really an interesting concept because it ties into not just everything that's happened throughout history, all the evil things that evil men have done, but uh, where it's heading. When you look at the technological movement, it's fascinating. We live in some very interesting times as we look into the future and look what look at what these futurist uh, technologists and scientists are saying is the direction of humankind. Uh, it's just startling. So, uh, uh, you know, I think it's important for us to start looking at, of course, understand the history, but also start looking at what the role of science and technology is moving forward because the ideologies that are there are exactly the same as all of the mystery religions of, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. And we see this permeate every aspect of what's going on today. You see it every day, and you just don't recognize it. They have their emblem on the back of the dollar bill. What is a pyramid cap by an all-seeing eye doing on the back of the dollar bill? What does a pyramid have to do with America? It has nothing to do with America. It has everything to do with the mystery religions and the fact that the goal of the mystery religions is a one-world government. And what is the caption beneath the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill? Novo or Doro Seclorum, the new social order. That's the new world order, ladies and gentlemen. And basically, of course, on the other side, you see an eagle. Only originally it wasn't an eagle. If you go back to the original, a suddenly uh, emblem on the great seal of the United States, it was a phoenix bird. What is the phoenix bird? That's the bird that dies and comes back to life. And that is, of course, what America was to be. America was 
was starting to be this new uh, a living entity that was going to lead the world to the new world order. And uh, of course, uh, that was just so blatant, though. They are very uh, slowly, they've changed it from a being a phoenix bird into an eagle. The average individual doesn't understand. We see the symbols every place we go, and the average individual has no idea what's going on. And, and suddenly, Gonzo does an excellent job of bringing this out. Three million people, you say, have actually seen your DVD? Yeah, well, on YouTube, uh, that's, uh, that's a number of hits I've gotten on the website there. Uh, it's quite startling. Uh, I, I have the DVD available on Amazon. Uh, part two is only available through my website right now just because it's so long. It's three hours long. And uh, I'm, at the moment, I am uh, unable to have it available on Amazon. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's trying to just get the word out because uh, these conversations need to happen, especially within the church. You know, that's something that uh, I've had, uh, I've ran into a lot of uh, issues with because most people are just kind of going along with the, the tide, so to speak. You know, they, they just kind of want to be a part of culture, and they don't really step back and think about where things are headed. Uh, a perfect example, I was, um, I, w- I was employed at a church for a very long time as a, as a AV tech, and uh, I had a lot of conversations with pastors. I got to uh, serve the ministry by, you know, being a tech for many events, and uh, when I was speaking to a pastor, uh, you know, and asked him about microchipping, he was all about it. So uh, that should be alarming to, to many people that, you know, uh, know about this stuff, that people within the church are so eager to take something like a microchip. And basically, we'll neither buy nor sell, let's be uh, us and the, uh, prepare the mark of the beast to be known by the number of his name. Our telephone number is one eight 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 two four liberty one eight 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 two four liberty or four six four two nine five. Fascinating information. You'll certainly want to go off on the internet and see this or get it from Amazon. But we'll be back in a moment. Uh, give us a call if you have a question or comment. Well, this is uh, Dr. Stan, and Chris so as Gonzo has pointed it out. A lot of our ministers are unaware of what's going on because they really don't understand the relationship with one, what's taking place today and the prophecies. Would you would you uh, think that's the case of Gonzo? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Bible prophecy has been pushed to the back of the, of the churches. They they don't really talk about that, especially in these mainline churches. And you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think. You know, uh, people uh, need to be saved, and so, you know, I'm not going to say anything negative about the church that is reaching out and trying to be seeker-friendly. Uh, however, uh, I think after a certain point, um, you know, you, you have to uh, graduate from the milk and uh, start eating some meat, and that's where Bible prophecy can really be helpful in opening your eyes to all kinds of things that are in the Bible that seem to reflect the world we're living in right now. And um, it's very hard for me to believe that, uh, you know, that people from thousands of years ago uh, just randomly or just guessed or were able to guess uh, things that are occurring in our time today. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really good, uh, a good exercise to look at Bible prophecy and, uh, you know, not only understand who's behind uh, these prophecies. It's God uh, giving us the future before it happens and authenticating itself through that and also to warn us and for us to warn the world that the time is short and that, uh, you know, Jesus is coming back soon and we should be excited about that. This is not uh, something that we should fear. And uh, so it's, I think it's important to do both, that to expose, uh, but also to uh, encourage each other and, and you know, point point back to the Lord because He's actually coming back, and He showed us all these things for a reason, so that we won't be deceived when these things begin to happen. Anthony, uh, there are a small number of ministries that are really out there on the front lines. I think L.A. Marzulli, and I know that you've certainly uh, talked to L.A. Uh, he's certainly doing a great job of beginning to correlate all of these things. And there's this small little group within Christendom who is actually pointing out what's going on. But the average American Christian, well-meaning, certainly believing in the Lord, but doesn't understand how it all fits together. And my concern is that... 
as this as thing goes, power begins to consolidate, an awful lot of Christians are going to take the mark. I think they're going to take the mark because it's the easiest thing to do. And they don't understand the correlation between the prophecies as they're written in the scriptures and the events that are unfolding in society today. Would you agree with that? Yeah, actually, absolutely. You know, it's it's kind of sad to to, to even contemplate that possibility. Uh, but the Bible talks about a great falling away uh, before the Lord's return. And, and I believe that that has something to do with the church actually turning away and uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of speculation as to how that's going to unfold. Uh, someone like L.A. has talked extensively about a possible... Hold that uh, thought, hold that thought. We'll be back okay. in just a moment. Well, this is Dr. Stan. Our guest is Gonzo uh, Shimura, and uh, basically he's put out a, a DVD. He's put out two of them. We've watched uh, all of the first one. We're almost through the second one. Three million hits on the first one up on uh, on Sydney and the Internet. So people are beginning to get the message. And, of course, it takes us into the this occult movement uh, as it permeates every aspect of our society, including the Christian church today, both the Catholic and Protestant branches of it. Well, if you're out there in the listening audience and you have a question for Gonzo, our telephone number is 1-888-24-LIBERTY, 1-888-24-LIBERTY or 464-8295. Here in the central coast of California, that's 464-8295. Gonzo, why don't you just sort of take the the first DVD and uh, give the background and, and the message that you're putting out? Uh, well, the first one uh, is all about the fallen angels and the new world order, and uh, most people uh, are unaware that back in Genesis six, uh, there's a passage that talks about the sons of God marrying human women and bearing children, and they were called the Nephilim, and they were the giants. And uh, in in my estimation, in my study, I believe that these were uh, these giants are where uh, Greek mythology comes from, and all these demigods. Of, uh, of mythology, and uh, they play a major role in the Old Testament, and um, a lot of the uh, the tribes and uh, the enemies enemies of Israel uh, throughout the Old Testament that God uh, instructs and leads Israel to wipe out. These tribes were Nephilim tribes, and uh, you know, of course, the atheists and the skeptics are very quick to uh, you know judge the Old Testament God and say, how can you? Uh, condoned murder and genocide and all these things, but when you begin to understand that there was actually uh, what Elie Marzulli terms the cosmic war, that there was a battle between these uh, creations of the fallen angels, an abomination to God uh, and humanity, it starts to make a lot of sense. And so that's where everything started. And then when you start looking at the the greater conspiracy, the 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 uh, the dark entities and Satan at the top of that, behind all of the major world events. Um, it, there's, a, there's a direct tie-in right from the top of the spiritual realm all the way to the physical and to the government, the politics, the, the military, the science, the education, the technology, every aspect, it, it trickles down. And, uh, you know, it, it, I, what I tried to also show is the New Age movement that, is so closely related to this because in reality the new age movement there's nothing really new about it you know it's all about uh the old mystery religions that's rebranded for the modern day and uh uh there's a direct tie-in there as, as well with uh the ufo phenomenon of today uh, there are thousands and thousands of people who are seeing something in the air and of course not everything is uh the ufo and some of it might be a hoax some of it might be just a misunderstanding of what you know what they're looking at. Uh, however, if if only one of those things is something beyond our world, then we're dealing with something that is quite literally beyond the world. And uh, it's fascinating to see, even in the scriptures, uh, uh, Satan is described as the prince of the power of the air. And uh, so this misconception that uh, Satan is just hanging out down in hell. Uh, no, actually, the Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air, and uh, you know, of course, Ephesians 6.12 talks about how we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but the principalities and powers in the heavenly realms, in the atmosphere. Uh, so this is uh, quite literally uh, described.
describing the UFO phenomenon and these alleged aliens from out there. Uh, but what seems to be going on in my research and many others, uh, what's, what seems to be going on is that these entities that are uh, arriving and channeling and doing all these things on Earth, they are not extraterrestrial in that they're from another planet somewhere, but actually they're interdimensional in that they come through some sort of veil or some sort of dimension and they appear on this side uh, to deceive us. And they're trying to tell us that they are from uh, another galaxy or another planet or something like that. But in reality, it, th- this is just part of the grand deception at the end times. And I believe uh, in order for a one world religion to form, there has to be some sort of major event. And something like the UFO phenomenon can definitely uh, influence the world into accepting a, a spirituality that can quote unquote unite the world and ladies and gentlemen basically what people don't understand is the part that the computer is playing I suddenly in this monitoring of the individual controlling the individual I suddenly uh, the everything is being monitored electronically they're, they're watching everything we do basically of course they do this in part in computers the, the emblem of one of the computers is an apple with a bite taken out of it and what did certainly Satan say to Adam in the Garden of Eden if you'll eat of the fruit of the tree uh, an apple well this is Dr. Stan I guess this is Gonzo Shimera you could write ahead of Gonzo Sure. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I look at in my in my newer film, Age of the Sea 2, Alchemy and the Rise of the Beast Image, is the uh, image of the beast that is talked about in Revelation 13. And, uh, you know, a lot of people discuss the mark of the beast. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of speculation about what it might be, how technology may be involved in it. Uh, but there's an interesting part of, the, of Revelation 13 that I believe is overlooked quite a bit. Uh, and it's a, it's a section that says that the the second beast or the false prophet gives this image breath so that it may speak and it might cause those who do not worship the image of the beast to be slain. And this is very fascinating when we start looking at what scientists and technologists are doing with artificial intelligence and trying to create life. And effectively, man is trying to create machine in its own image and uh, what that actually ends up becoming is the image of the beast in my uh, studies and uh, it's, it's very fascinating because this is what causes the mark uh, and this is what causes all the, uh, the the enslavement basically of the world through the technology and so again it's one of those things where uh, you know we think about science and technology of the modern day where is it in the bible there's nothing of that sort well, actually, it seems like there is. There seems like this image that speaks uh, is artificial intelligence in some way. And we know this also because when we look at Daniel chapter 3, uh, we know Nebuchadnezzar formed a statue, an image. But this image didn't actually speak. It was just a statue. Uh, but, of course, in the future, uh, this image is going to be something much more. Uh, so it's just very interesting and fascinating to look at some of these prophecies and begin to understand it in, in a way that only in our time uh, would make sense. And uh, that's why I believe that the Word of God is so fascinating and so interesting, uh, is that there's a message in all of it. And it's, uh, of course, I don't know if John knew that this was what he was seeing, uh, but I think it's definitely possible as we live in this world now uh, that that's what's going on. And uh, another thing that's hold that thought. Hold that thought. We'll be okay. back here in just a moment here. Well, this is Dr. Stan. I guess this is Gonzo Shimura, and he's put together these wonderful DVDs going into the occult uh, influence of what's going on in the world today. If you have a question or comment, our telephone number is one 24 liberty one 24 liberty or 4648295. But remember, certainly, uh, why, of course, for almost 6,000 years, the horse was the major means of transportation, and they were even around, certainly, at the beginning 
beginning of the last century. We were just beginning to make the first planes, the first rickety uh, uh, cars, you know, in the beginning of the uh, 20th century. Uh, and look what's happened since then, to the point where basically we now have a situation where everybody in the world can be numbered. And they can be, certainly be numbered uh, through these uh, miracles of the uh, suddenly of computers, and they can be tracked. In fact, they can, uh, they can track everything in this world. And basically, this could never have happened before at any time in history. And I do believe we're living in prophetic times. Well, if you have a question or comment for our guest, our number is one 24 liberty or 464-8295. 1-888-24-LIBERTY-4-64-8295. Gonzo, how can people get uh, to your website, get your DVDs, and get your information? Sure. People can go to ageofdefeat.com. That's ageofdefeat.com. And that'll take you to my blog. And uh, you can go there and click on AOD2. You can, uh, there's several ways you can get the DVD. You can either purchase it at the store online uh, on my website. Uh, or if you'd like to uh, purchase the first DVD, uh, Fallen Angels in the New World Order, you can go to Amazon type in Age of Deceit into the Amazon search engine, and you can do that. Or you can watch it for free if you go to uh, just Google and just type in Age of Deceit. It should be one of the first things to pop up there. And uh, the first film is absolutely free to watch. Uh, part two will be up on YouTube in a few weeks, uh, but right now uh, it's only available on DVD, uh, which you can go to ageofdeceit.com and uh, click on the store and you can purchase your DVDs right there. Okay, fine. And basically, uh, now, well, you go right ahead, though. You were telling us certainly your view of what's going on today because this certainly this influence, this age of deceit, permeates every aspect of our life. And the average Christian doesn't understand the relationship between what is taking place today and the ancient prophecies. And yet I believe we're seeing them being fulfilled on a regular basis through the miracles of electronics. But what people do not understand is that so many of the people who were involved with certainly the electronic industry have gotten their inspiration from the occult. And actually, they've gotten this right, actually going into the other dimension or having ideas from the other dimension come into their minds. And we're talking about people like Bill Gates. We're talking about people who are, have actually done so much to alter the, the electronic structure of our society. People don't, can't, don't correlate uh, certainly what is going on today uh, from a spiritual point of view or uh, with what has taken place from a prophetic point of view. Our number is one triple eight two four liberty or 464-8295. And would you agree with that, Gonzo? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, there's a, a strong prophetic precedence that is being ignored largely in the church. And, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's so many scriptures that jump out. Uh, Daniel 2.43 talks about how uh, it's the bottom of the feet there of the statue, uh, where uh, the mixture of iron and clay, uh, where they say that it says that the uh, the iron mixed with common clay, uh, and, but they and then they combined with one another with the feet of men, but they will not adhere to one another. And this is interesting because, uh, of course, iron and clay they don't mix, but you know who are they? You know, there's a word there, they, and some people have said that these are the fallen angels that may return. Um, I think that it's possible that because the imagery used is iron uh, mixed with clay, with clay being humans, uh, it's very fascinating when you start looking at articles and, with scientists who say that they have actually created lifelike cells out of metal. So humans are usually carbon-based. Uh, but, uh, you know, of course, they're saying that we can potentially create metal-based life forms. And so, again, the Word of God is verified quite literally there, uh, iron mixing with miry clay, that uh, something that humanity might merge with. And this is the topic of transhumanism, uh, where this, uh, uh, this ideology that is being uh, pushed right now to merge humanity with machines, with animals and different things to create uh, a better humanity in the eyes of those who want to do it, that's actually corrupting humanity. 
And, uh, you know, to, to give you an idea of how real this is, the head of engineering at Google, uh, whose name is Ray Kurzweil, he is one of the, the spokesmen for this transhumanist movement. Uh, there's another gentleman um, uh, from Russia who is a mogul, a billionaire. He's in, the, in leading the charge, saying that we will achieve human immortality by the year 2045. And all these things are counterfeit to the real salvation, for, to the real uh, true uh, immortality, which is provided by Jesus Christ. So, uh, again, the deception is so deep. And if you're not aware of these things, you're going to line right up uh, and get chipped, uh, get enhanced, so to speak, and uh, be a part of this movement. Uh, and, and that's why I'm out there trying to warn people uh, through the DVDs, through uh, my blog, and through I also have a, a radio show called Canary Cry Radio. It's a podcast uh, that you can get online. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it's, I think it's important to uh, to get it out there and to, you know, just make sure people at least consider some of the things that we've talked about. Well, what sort of response are you getting? Us in the, uh, do, are Christians beginning to understand? I mean, or are they simply living the good life and really totally oblivious to the uh, spiritual significance, the prophetic significance of so much of what's going on today? What's your impression? Well, it's a mixed bag. Um, I've had many people tell me that the, the film has impacted them and helped them come back to church or... Uh, you know, come back to the Lord, which is a great blessing, and I, and I praise God for that. Um, but then there are others who simply don't understand. They, you know, uh, say that this is not kingdom work, that this is <laughs> this is not, uh, you know, uh, biblical and things like that. So uh, it's a mixed bag, and it, it's interesting because you hear it from all sides, uh, not just within the church, but, you know, you have to answer to your skeptics and your your atheists and and uh, and that's fine too. Uh, I love having discussions, uh, philosophical discussions about those uh, aspects of, uh, of our world as well. But yeah, it's it's been it's been a mixed bag. But overall, uh, the support has been it has been great, and I think it is a growing uh, aspect of uh, especially young people. And this is something that um, I think is very important, uh, especially for me. And uh, just looking at the future and, and the young people and, and, you know, our children, our children's children, uh, there, there is a small group of people starting to wake up to these things, and, and the numbers are growing, and that's what I've seen. So that's a positive thing. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I often go back to the phrase, a rapture or revival. So hopefully one of those two will occur. All right, fine. Well, our telephone number is one eight 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 two four liberty one triple eight two four liberty or four six four eight two nine five. We have Eric calling from Michigan. Eric, do you have a question or comment? I do, Dr. Stan. Uh, you mentioned uh, microchip, and Stan, do you remember in twenty twelve there was a financial crisis at the Vatican Bank uh, under uh, Pope Ratzinger's uh, supervision? And so what ultimately occurred uh, was a revelation uh, that the cardinals all had to be microchipped because of this financial debacle. And I, I want to ask Gonzo if, if that at all ties into uh, world affairs, uh, uh, acknowledging the fact that throughout history somehow the, the Vatican has become, uh, I guess it is Dan the, the the world's second wealthiest so-called nation state or banking entity well, it has a great deal of wealth. It has a great deal of gold. I've heard it said, and I don't know whether it's true or not, that the Vatican has about a quarter of the gold in the world. And I don't know anything at all about shipping the cardinals. Do you know anything at all about that, Gonzo? Uh, I haven't heard much about shipping the cardinals, but the Vatican has a major role to play in all of this because... Uh, first off, uh, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam have put out a book called uh, Petros Romanos, The Final Pope is Here. And the second book, Exo Vaticana, uh, The Vatican's Astonishing Plan for the Arrival of an Alien Savior. And they actually have a uh, the two of the biggest satellites in the world, or I'm sorry, telescopes, telescopes in the world. One of them is called Lucifer, and it's actually on Mount Graham in Arizona. So, of course, what's going on there? But in my film, what I show is that not only is this a phenomenon that's interesting, 
Uh, but the Vatican uh, has come out and said that they don't rely on any external companies for their technology. They actually take uh, get custom-made technology from Israel. So, again, it's, this is fascinating because the Vatican, uh, there's a direct link there with Israel. And then you start looking at the abomination of desolation that's talked about in the Bible and that how that ties into the image of the beast and how, you know, potentially the Pope uh, will be this false uh, prophet figure who will give breath to this image and make it speak. So there's a definite tie in there, and uh, I lay that all out in my film uh, in detail to show that there is something very fascinating going on with the ties between the Vatican and Israel and uh, the technology. And, of course, Israel is the second leading nation uh, in technology, in artificial intelligence, uh, these topics are uh, are not discussed a whole lot in the Christian world, but but Israel is one of the leaders in technology, and uh, the, the, which again just makes this case even more uh, interesting and fascinating to look at because uh, you know why are they uh, so ahead in technology uh, as America is, and why are they uh, you know helping uh, the Vatican so much? How does this relationship have anything to do with uh, potentially creating? the mark of the beast, the image of the beast. So, uh, you know, I haven't heard exactly uh, what, you know, the microchipping of the popes, but uh, I believe uh, it's possible. It's definitely possible. And, uh, you know, and the mark, one other thing that I would like to, to drop is that, you know, the mark of the beast, a lot of people have speculated that it's a chip, and I think it's possible, uh, but I believe it might be something more because, uh uh, my, some of my friends and colleagues who are researchers as well are into this topic, uh, it seems to be that it's not just the microchip that tracks you, but it's something that's actually going to change us uh, genetically. And, uh, of course, uh, the Bible talks about no salvation or, or no grace or anything for people that take the mark. There's nothing there that says, oh, you can just take the mark out and you're fine. No, it's something that's permanent. And so uh, in uh, my eyes and in my research, what I've speculated upon is that perhaps what this what this mark is going to do is create us effectively into the image of the beast as well, abandoning our image of God that we were actually created in. Well, there are a lot of very, very strange things, and I certainly we do carry both of those books, all by Tom Horn and Chris Putman. They're both available by calling 1-800-544-8927, and basically it goes into their contention that the current Pope is the last Pope, and he is the one that is described in the Scriptures. They make a very, very good case for it. I think it's a well worthwhile evaluating that and getting the books and reading it, and they even talk about these telescopes that, that are down there. Uh, I guess, it, is that Arizona, where, the, where that is, that New Mexico? It's uh, Arizona, Mount Graham. In, in Arizona. But basically, uh, basically uh, the uh, people there are certainly is suggesting they've actually talked to the people in these, uh, in, the, in, in these observatories, and basically they're not looking at it from a Christian point of view, but from a practical point of view, and trying to tap into this supernatural power that is out there. It's trying to tap into the supernatural power that's coming from space. Eric, anything else you want to say before we let you go? Uh, yeah, you know what, Stan, uh, I do have another question, but uh, it's called the Vatican Observatory Research, Research Group of, of that Borg. I remember Tom Horn, when you, I think he had him on for his book, Zenith 2016, and he was uh, uh, describing that, the Vatican Observatory Research research group, board. It sounds like board. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this would make sense because, as Malachi Martin said, you know, with his books, Windswept House, Hospice to the Devil, the Vatican is really satanic at the very core. And in order to, uh, Satan would want the greatest influence over the, over the Christian world populace, so the Roman Catholic uh system seems to be that system and um, 
Well, I think you know, that I, 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 Eric, there are a lot of wonderful Catholics out there, and I think that they, Satan has infiltrated the Catholic Church, but he's also infiltrated the Protestant Church. So, but I, you're absolutely right. At the highest levels of the Vatican, there are satanic uh, uh, cells, according to Malachi Martin, and you can get that if you listen to our four CD set. And then, of course, at the highest levels of the Vatican, there are pedophile uh, groups pedophile groups? Why are they allowing this to go on? Oh, well, of course, these do deep demonic uh, influences. Hey, we're out of time, Eric. Thank you so very much for calling. And uh, Gonzo, we've only got a few minutes more. Why don't you go ahead and just sort of wrap up your thoughts for the night? Sure. Well, again, Dr. Stan, I appreciate you uh, giving me the time to talk about these things and uh, talk about my film. Um, you know, really, what it comes down to, uh, I believe, is that uh, the Bible also tells us uh, who defeats the New World Order, and that's uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, it's very interesting because, uh, you know, most people read a lot of these scriptures about Jesus, and they don't necessarily think of it in terms of, uh, you know, Jesus defeating any kind of world power or world system, but that's exactly what he does. Um, And uh, I encourage people to uh, study the scriptures, uh, every day, and uh, you know, don't necessarily believe everything I said here. Go do your own homework. Uh, Acts uh, seventeen eleven. Be a good Berean, and uh, and uh, of course, be in prayer. And uh, I would uh, encourage people to check out the movie uh, Age of Deceit, both part one and part two. Uh, again, part one, you can go to ageofdeceit dot com and get all the information there. Uh, and uh, I would appreciate your support in that. And uh, you know, this, both of these films were done on uh, on my own dime and uh, just my own time. Uh, no production team or anything like that. It was just me with a computer. Uh, so your support would go a long way in helping reach more people with the gospel and with this information that I believe is vital. And how, uh, once again, how can people get uh, copies of the DVDs? Uh, you can go to ageofdeceit.com. That's ageofdeceit.com. And uh, you'll be led to my blog. Uh, and you can get all the information there. And basically, I'm sure that was a very expensive as a proposition because basically there's all sorts of interviews with all sorts of important people. There's certainly a lot of certainly animation. He done a tremendous job. It's well worthwhile watching. We're going to be back here in just a moment to wrap up tonight's program right here at Radio Liberty. Well, Gonzo, any parting thoughts before we let you go? Uh, just uh, wanted to, again, say thank you, Dr. Stan, for not just uh, having me on, but uh, all the work you've done throughout the years. Uh, I, I found your book at some point in my journey of uncovering these issues, and, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a big help in uh, helping me grasp some of these topics that are very heavy but important. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you, and uh, thanks for everybody listening to, uh, you know, giving us the time to uh, discuss some of these matters. And uh I uh, ask for, you know, just prayer and uh, consideration for some of these things uh, because it's important. It absolutely is. It's the very essence of what's going on today. Gonzo, God bless you. And we'll be talking to you, I think, next week. Under any circumstances, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and we do hope you enjoyed our conversation with Gonzo. And basically, of course, this is really what it's all about. We're fighting certainly a a, a spiritual battle. It's being fought on a political, ideological, and cultural battlefield. But behind everything going on, uh, there are these spiritual forces. And basically, we live in a material world, but there is a mystical world. We live in a tangible world. There is an intangible world. We live in a subjective world, there's a spiritual world, and we live in a visible world, but there's an invisible world. And you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is not imaginary, it's real. And in fact, it's really far more real than most of what we actually see and touch on a regular basis. You must understand that there's certainly behind everything going on today, behind what's going on over there in the Ukraine, and what's going on in Syria, and what's going on uh, certainly in this uh, coming conflict between the Shia Muslims and the Sunni Muslims, 
Of course, remember the reading of what it says in Revelation 6, 8 about this great war that's going to come and a quarter of the population of the world is going to be killed and then things really get bad after that. And understand, ladies and gentlemen, that, that we're moving into what I believe are terrible, terrible times. What is the consolation? Well, we're going to have to have a personal relationship with our Lord and we're going to have to depend upon Him and if we do perish in the coming period of of conquest and turmoil why we know where we're going to spend eternity and that is of course what keeps me going and what uh, keeps our family going uh, because of course we believe with all of our hearts uh, in the in the scriptures and the prophecies and we're knowing full well that there is a heaven and one day we'll be with the Lord so uh, of course our job is to do the best we can to try to reach others to let them understand what's going on and so that we should be involved politically but I understand that you are there just in, 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 locally very important that you get involved with your local politics we do not know how much rigging of the elections there is we do know that here in California when they try to get an initiative onto the ballot recently why the Secretary of State would not allow several counties to actually count the votes and why they didn't want them counted because they didn't want the initiative to go through we have total corruption I said at the office of the Secretary of State here in the state of California and it's not just in California when you have people who don't believe in God who embrace the other side you can understand we're going to have problems but you have to get involved and certainly uh, we certainly are going to be in, hopefully helping and uh, t- talking to the various candidates so you will uh, locally who you'll know to vote for and you need to be doing the same thing in your community you want to have a, an honest goodness good sheriff you want to have certainly a uh, any good local officials because we may very well see the breakdown of the structure of society as we know it. We're moving into I believe very very difficult times is it a matter of weeks, months years? I do not know but I've been at this for over 52 years now and I just have a feeling that uh, things are moving towards a climax and whether it's in the, it's just going to be a matter of a year or two but I do believe that we're going to see the progressive erosion of the structure of our society and you're going to have to make your preparations now, know who the people are you can certainly uh, uh, depend upon. Certainly we suggest uh, Joel Skelton's books, certainly uh, going into strategic relocation. If you're in the large city, well, maybe uh, certainly you can't move out of the city, but have some place that you can go or other people that you can work with and who will support you. But the cities are not, the major cities are not going to be a safe place when the whole structure structure of society breaks down. I'm not talking about things imaginary, talk about them real. I certainly if you want to get the Joel Skousen's books, they're available by calling one eight hundred five four four eight nine two seven. If you're in a position to join the Radio Liberty family of supporters and help support our networks of radio stations on the East Coast and on the West Coast, help us reach people all across America. Why, our number is one eight hundred five four four eight nine two seven, And then we ask you to pray for America, to pray for revival. But please pray for Radio Liberty, our provision and protection. Our number one eight hundred five four four eight nine two seven. 